Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing good and I am back with the fourth video on the video series on classic science food, where does it come from? And in this video, we are going to learn about malnutrition and hunger. It's very important that for the proper functioning of our body, we get the right amount and the right quality of food. But unfortunately, a good percentage of our population are deprived of food. They do not even get the three meals of the day. So in this video, we will look at the scenarios that may arise if we do not get food. So let's get started. So now that we have spoken so much about food, so we saw that huge varieties of food are available everywhere. So that's what we presumed with whatever we have studied so far. But still we see a lot of hunger, a lot of malnutrition. So what is malnutrition? Malnutrition is the scenario where uh, the right amount of nutrition is not received by the body of a human being. So when a child doesn't receive the right amount of nutrition, what happens? It results in diseases. The child tends to become weak, it, he or she tends to develop diseases. Now the question is, when we have so many huge varieties of food items, then why do we have hunger? Why do we have malnutrition? So why do we still have people who cannot afford to have food, who, who do not get food to eat? So why does that happen? Now there are a lot of reasons. So some of the causes are poverty. Now people do not have money to buy themselves food because whether we talk about cereals, we talk about pulses, we talk about oil, we talk about uh, meat, we talk about eggs, we talk about fishes. Now for everything you need some money to buy it from the shopkeeper because we saw the sources from where we get them. But end of the day, either it should be like you already own a huge stretch of land where you have planted all the trees. So in that case, obviously you will not suffer from malnutrition because you own such a huge stretch of land where you have so many things. But not everybody owns such huge stretch of land or uh, such huge property. So there are a lot of people who do not own anything. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of urban people like us, we do not own any field, we do not own any river or anything, but we just, that we just earn, we have money, we go to the shops and we buy food items for ourselves. We buy rice, we buy wheat, we buy eggs, we buy whatever we want, we buy vegetables and fruits and that's how we eat and that's how we remain healthy. But there are a lot of people who do not have enough money to buy anything. So poverty is one main reason. Unemployment. Now since there is no employment, people do not have jobs, people do not have any source of income. That is why there is poverty. Overpopulation. Now the population is increasing day by day. The number of human beings that is increasing very fast. Now when there are so many human beings, obviously their needs will be there, they need more amount of food, but the food production is somehow not increasing at that rate. The Compared to the rate at which the population is increasing, the food production is not increasing at that rate. Secondly, when the population is increasing so fast, providing employment to such increasing population is also becoming a tedious task. Therefore, people are not getting employment, people are poor, they are not able to afford food. So because of all these reasons, there is a lot of malnutrition and hunger everywhere. And what is the result of malnutrition and hunger? It causes diseases, it co even causes death. So that's the result. So that's the very sad part of it. Now the question is, what can we do to solve this problem of malnutrition, solve this problem of diseases and death? So what, what is that little bit of effort that we can do from our side? So the first thing that can be done is increase the food production. Now, when we are seeing that the population is increasing so fast, so to, to keep it at par with the increasing population, we should also try to increase the production of food. But then yes, at the same time, it is more important to control the population as well. So these days you see there are a lot of programs, family planning programs which are in place where they say that uh, a family should have only one child. At the max, two children, not more than that. But still we see there are a lot of families where you have uh, seven, eight children. 
so that adds to the population so it is important that the population is controlled and then at the same time we should also try to increase the production of food that is we should cultivate more crops we should take proper care of crops so that uh, you know there is less wastage of crops so a lot of techniques are there by which we can increase the food production secondly only increasing food production will not help definitely so along with that we also need to ensure that the economic condition is also improved because if people even if we are increasing the production of crops but if people are still poor if people still don't have money so they will not be able to buy themselves anything right so it is also important that the economic condition is improved so how can we improve the economic condition there are many ways first thing is by controlling the population so when you have less population you have less people so you can provide employment to everyone so when people have employment they have money they can afford food so that's one way of looking at it the other way is we should provide better income to those involved in agriculture now who are involved in agriculture who is responsible for cultivating crops primarily the farmers so the farmers should be paid well so that they do a good job now when we are paid well we are motivated to work better so the same logic applies everywhere so if the fa farmers are doing good if they are given better income so they are motivated to do a better job so they will put in their best efforts to cultivate more and more crops to give the best quality crops so if they are doing a very good job so we have a better crop yield when we have a better crop yield so what happens so it is able to meet needs of more people so you see everything is like linked so we actually need to take care of all the factors we need to control the population we need to uh, give better income to the farmers uh, we also need to increase the crop production we also need to have good economic condition for in every household so that they can afford food and the most important thing that each one of us can do from our end is we should stop wasting food because we already see that there are so many people who are not getting food who are dying due to lack of food and on the other hand there are many who just waste food just like that so you take maybe if you think that you can eat only one chapati so there is no point that you take four in your plate and then put it and throw it into the dustbin because once you throw anything into the dustbin nobody else eats it up from the dustbin right so these days uh, you would have see, uh, heard about those programs where they say that okay if you have a party at your house and if you think that a lot of food has been left over not wasted left over that means maybe you prepared food for 50 people but only 10 people turned up so you have food remaining at your house so there are certain numbers where you can call and they'll come and collect the food and then they'll distribute the, that food to some poor people so all these things help so we should try to stop wasting food we should take only that much food which we can eat so that is very important because see it is very inhuman that somebody else is dying of hunger and we are throwing food into the dustbin so that's really in i hope this was useful the next video is very very important because in the next video we are going to do a lot of practice question on this lesson food where does it come from so be with us